Ladies and gentlemen, um, just welcome you to the next session. Uh, the next session is dealing with uh, courses in animal science and veterinary science that are run by the School of Animal and Veterinary Science. Uh, my name is uh, Wayne Hine. I'm the head of that school. And it's my pleasure to welcome all the uh, mothers and fathers and prospective students who might be interested in our courses to the next session. Over the next 25 minutes or so, um, I hope to tell you a little bit about the um, courses that we offer, um, a little bit about the campus at which the majority of the studies are undertaken, and a little bit about the employment prospects, job prospects, career prospects that anybody entering any of these programs might have in the future. <clears throat> I'm going to be assisted by one of our final year DVM students, Alicia, who um, within about four months, five months, you might well find her treating um, one of your dogs or cats if you, or another animal if you um, take her to a vet uh, somewhere in South Australia because she is on the doorstep of graduating um, as a vet after having spent six years in the programs that um, I'm about to describe. Before I do that though, um, just a introductory slide that if you've attended other sessions you will have already seen but it's just a reminder that um, University of Adelaide is South Australia's leading university. It's a member of the group of eight universities in Australia, ranked within the top 1% of universities um, worldwide. Um, and we educate tomorrow's leaders. We develop career-ready graduates um, who have global learning opportunities and industry connections. Um, they have a unique learning environment that's incorporating small group learning within the university. It's one of the particular emphases that have been placed by our current vice chancellor. And the university uh, within South Australia can boast the most vibrant um, campus lifestyle of all of the universities in our state. Turning from the university to the Roseworthy campus, uh, where the majority of the animal science and veterinary science programs are delivered. It's an old campus. The college itself was established in 1883. It is the oldest agricultural college in Australia, and I think it is actually one of the oldest in the British Empire, what was the British Empire outside of the United Kingdom. It's a very large piece of land. It's a large campus, 1,600 hectares of farmland in the old... Um, Language, that's 3,000 acres, a little over 3,000 acres. So it's a very large parcel of land um, that's used uh, for farming uh, in, in Mediterranean-style agriculture, so dry land farming. Um, the programs or these um, particular features that we have at Roseworthy, we have a companion animal health centre which um, administers health and medicine to dogs and cats and uh, pet animals. We have an equine health and performance centre Production Animal Health Centre, which caters for the needs of livestock animals, so sheep and cattle, pigs, goats, alpacas. Um, and in addition to those clinical centres, we have um, a piggery, we have a 300 sow piggery, we have a poultry unit, we have lots of sheep, um, sheep flocks in the paddocks, we have 300 Angus beef cattle, we have an aquaculture facility, and that we have some fauna, some Australian wildlife. So. Um, I think as you'll see as we move through the presentation, one of the key attributes of our program at Roseworthy is the ease with which students can have contact with animals and learn how to handle animals, and it's a major strength um, of our program. This is a photo of the old College Hall, 1883. Um, so the Roseworthy campus is a mix of tradition and modern, and this is part of the tradition. The Roseworthy campus, um, at the moment, we have on-site accommodation for about 150 students. and They get looked after pretty well in terms of some of the facilities that students like to see. We have gyms and swimming pools and taverns, all of the um, accoutrements that students would like, dining halls, lecture theatres, teaching labs, research labs, recreational areas, a student hub, um, and a very good library. Also on the campus, I would like to point out that we, it's not just the University of Adelaide at the Roseworthy campus. We have um, a number of other partners that are co-located with us. The most prominent of those are SADI, the South Australian Agriculture and Regional um, Research Institute. 
That's a part of uh, the PERSA, the South Australian Department of Agriculture, so they have a number of their people located at Roseworthy, co-located with the university academics. We have an entity called the Pork CRC, which is a special um, alliance of researchers interested in the piggery industry. And again, it's a combination of government, industry and university uh, people working together uh, on the Roseworthy campus, co-located. At the moment, we also have some, uh, a partner who is interested in wheat breeding and developing now also some programs in barley breeding. So it's not all animal science at Roseworthy, it is most predominantly animal science. But there is a very, very important wheat breeding program that um, goes on on the Roseworthy campus as well. The school, of, the school itself, the School of Animal and Veterinary Science, is Australia's newest veterinary school. And it's the most recently established. Uh, in 2008, produced the first graduates in 2013. So, so far, we've only produced two crops of graduates. This year, when Alicia graduate, graduates with her colleagues, that will be the third cohort of graduates. They were still very new. It's a, got, the school has gotten through the start-up phase and kind of um, going into the consolidation phase. But it is still a very new school. Um, and that, that one of the implications of that is that we have very good new modern facilities. At the current time, um, across the two programs, animal science and veterinary science, we have roughly 650 students. Um, combination of undergraduates and postgraduates, and around about 100 staff. Um, that would include the academic staff, the teaching staff, plus professional and technical staff who provide um, assistance, uh, in, very important assistance. The establishment of the veterinary program, in particular at Roseworthy, reinvigorated um, the campus, and Roseworthy is now readily becoming the major animal and veterinary research centre uh, in South Australia. At the campus, um, we offer, or through, through our school, um, we offer three degree programs. So it's, relatively, it's a relatively simple menu of offerings within the school. You can do a Bachelor of Science in Animal Science. You can undertake a Bachelor of Science, Veterinary Bioscience. And you can do a Doctor of Veterinary Medicine. Um, and when you graduate, you have the post-nominal DVM. We also have honours programs, so in particularly in the Bachelor of Science program, a number of those graduates will feed into um, honours, honours years and do further, further research in an honours program. But it's a, simple, a relatively simple menu of offerings. So what is the difference between animal science and veterinary science? Animal science is the study of the biology of animals with a focus on vertebrates, um, particularly mammals, and their function. So it's kind of the pre-clinical end of understanding how animals work. You understand their physiology, their anatomy, their chemistry, how they, uh, their reproductive systems, how the nutritional aspects of animals. You learn all of that pre-clinical um, aspects about functions of animals. In veterinary science, the veterinary science course builds on that as a basis and then goes one step further and applies all of the principles of human medicine to animals. So it's concerned with the medical, uh, diagnostic and therapeutic principles that are used in human medicine to apply those to an animal context, be that companion animals, wildlife or livestock. So it's all about recognition of when an animal is diseased or distressed making a diagnosis about what has gone wrong, and then having, uh, formulating a treatment plan of how to correct that. It's, it's the clinical application of the animal science. The Bachelor of Science, Animal Science, is a three-year degree. In 2015, um, the ATAR level that you needed to achieve to get above the cutoff was a tad under 70, but if you just 69.45, that's a difficult number to remember. If you just remember around 70, you need to aim, if you aspire to enter into the um, BSc Animal Science Program, you should be aiming to have an ATAR 70 and above. There's an assumed knowledge of chemistry and maths. 
And as I stated before, um, the BSC Animal Science Program is quite frequently used as a pathway for further graduate and postgraduate studies. So for people who are interested in pursuing a research career in the animal sciences, whether it's through an honours pathway, a master's pathway, or a three-year PhD. Uh, a BSc Animal Science is a very good pathway into that higher, higher um, level of education. The BSc Veterinary Bioscience is very similar to animal science in some ways. And indeed, in the first year of the two programs, there's a lot of co-teaching. And I should also mention that the first year of B the Bachelor of Science, Animal Science, and the first year of BSc Veterinary Bioscience, most of your time will be spent here on North Terrace. And the students, are, so you do a lot of the basic science subjects. Um, you'll spend one day a week out at Roseworthy um, learning to handle animals, some preliminary handle, a animal handling skills. Um, but the majority of your first year will be spent on North Terrace. A little bit about the BSc Veterinary Bioscience Program. Again, it's a three-year program. This time there are prerequisites, not assumed knowledge. You must have these subjects as prerequisites, chemistry and math studies, but there is an assumed knowledge of physics. The Veterinary Bioscience Program is a very competitive program to get into, and the eight, we have an ATAR threshold of 90. So as a high school student, if you do not achieve an ATAR of 90, you will not be in the pool that is considered for entry to the BSc Vet Bioscience Program. Or if you wanted to transfer from other tertiary studies, which occurs in a limited number of in, uh, uh, occasions, we have a GPA threshold of five, again, a pretty high hurdle to clear to get into the veterinary bioscience. In addition to those academic hurdles, we have um, three, two other hurdles. First of all, a questionnaire. When you apply to get into the veterinary bioscience program, you must complete a questionnaire, which um, tests or asks questions about a number of um, issues related to animals, your interest in animals, um, why do you think you might have an aptitude to work for animals? What would you like to do in your career? Things of that sort. So there's that questionnaire plus the academic hurdle. So people that meet those two criteria, um, from that group of people, we then invite um, the top ranking candidates to come to an interview. We have a multiple mini interview process that's held at Roseworthy, um, usually in Perhaps the timing can vary, but late December, early January, around about that time. Uh, it's a seven station plus another questionnaire validation station, which goes through a number of criteria um, which we believe are important to equip students for entry to the veterinary profession. Um, so those, the results of that multiple interview process are tabulated and scored and then at the end of all of that process, we have um, a ranking system where your ATAR GPA scores plus your performance at interview um, are assessed on a 50-50 scoring basis. So they have equal weighting. So your in the interview is a very, very important component of the overall score. It scores for half of your final score. And then um, offers are then made to the highest ranking applicants at the end of that kind of three-phase entry um, criteria. And just as uh, an example, um, it's a very competitive program um, to get into. In 2015, we had um, 324 applicants to enter um, the veterinary bioscience program. 100, around 160 had an ATAR higher than 90, so they were considered. The others were not considered. Of the 160-ish that had an ATAR higher than 90, we selected probably 60 or so to come to interview. And out of that, we selected around 45, 45 to 50. So it's pretty hard to get in. The Doctor of Veterinary Medicine is a three-year further extension of the, the Veterinary Bioscience Program. It's a three-year clinical postgraduate degree. And entry into the DVM program is by successful completion of the Bachelor of Science Vet Bioscience. So you must have gained entry to vet bioscience and completed those three years of study um, to be eligible to enter the DVM. 
And in addition, we require that students complete in that first three years of their veterinary bioscience program, 12 weeks of animal husbandry extramural studies, what we abbreviate to the acronym AHEMS. That means that in the vacation time, during the veterinary science um, degree, students will go to um, placements, which um, we assist them with arranging um, and coordinating, and they're expected to get experience on, uh, say, a cattle property, a sheep property, a horse property, a piggery, some experience with a poultry unit, experience with dogs and cats. They must complete a range of um, practical animal handling, animal husbandry experience, as well as complete the, um, vet the academic part of the veterinary bioscience. They must also maintain a minimum cumulative GPA of four during the veterinary bioscience program. And if they satisfy all of those um, criteria, then they will be um, given entry to the DVM. And the DVM then persists for another three years, and the DVM focuses solely on the um, clinical aspects of um, veterinary medicine. So I want to talk a little bit about the veterinary profession as it exists today in Australia and um, job prospects for um, graduates in the DVM and job prospects for graduates with um, animal science. Today in Australia there's probably a few more now than 9,000 vets across Australia. It, it, they're actually quite difficult to count. You'd think it would be an easy thing to do but it's not that easy. There's between, I would say between nine and 10,000 vets registered in um, Australia. Not all of them are practicing, a lot of them are retired, but they just maintain a, um, a registration within their state, but they don't physically practice. About 500, there's about 500 vets in South Australia, so um, in terms of the uh, demographics of the veterinary profession in this country, we're one of the smaller states. Um, New South Wales, Queensland, and Victoria each have 25 percentage or so of the vets, there's a large number of vets. And the number of vets um, roughly corresponds with um, population of livestock, sheep, cattle, pigs, poultry, the livestock animals, and human population because it's humans who keep pet animals that need veterinary attention. And most of the, most of the demographics of our livestock and, and humans, of course, are in the eastern states. So most of the veterinary profession then is concentrated in the eastern states. 60% of new graduates in the recent years have probably been moving into mixed or large animal practice and the balance of them go to small animal practice in urban and peri-urban areas. There's probably has been and will continue to be a general trend for veterinarians to go to city-based practices. At the moment, um, the veterinary profession is becoming more and more feminized, uh, which is a really dramatic change over, the, over my lifetime. Uh, when I graduated, it was very much a male profession that's changed. There's now equal numbers. The gender balance in the profession is equal, equal number of male and female vets. And we're just on the cusp now of having a female dominant veterinary profession because our student body is overwhelmingly female. Across all universities in Australia, between 80 and 85% of our students are female. And that's not just Australia, it's a global um, phenomenon. So as we move forward um, for the next 5, 10, 20 years, the veterinary profession will become a feminized profession. OK, animal and veterinary science careers. Um, animal science, the, just in very broad terms, the sorts of things that our graduates can do. Management of animal breeding, feeding and care, if you have a degree in animal science. A degree in veterinary science, of course, you're going to be um, involved with animal medicine, treating animals in some way. There's a, a really great variety of careers from, that can, you can pursue from both types of degrees and many different um, career paths, ranging from um, small business management, say you'll have your own practice as a veterinarian, you might have a consultancy as an animal scientist, through to senior management, senior academic positions, and a whole range of um, things in between, some of which I'll illustrate in a slide or two. Careers as a veterinarian, typically um, most of our graduates within their first um, few years out will go into practice. Um, they've come to be a vet because they want to go into practice. Most of them will do that for their first um, few years out. Small animals, large animals, mixed animal practice and um, a, a smaller demand but still very interesting demand in uh, zoo animals. 
You can become a specialist consultant uh, as your career develops, so you might choose to become a, an equine specialist, a horse specialist. Uh, you might want to be a dog specialist, a cat specialist. You could become a specialist in an area, so a specialist surgeon, a um, specialist in internal medicine, a specialist in production animal medicine. There's many, many different um, opportunities to specialise within the career as time goes by. Um, the government uses a number of veterinarians. There's a number of career paths that vets can follow in the government for um, quarantine, animal quarantine inspection service and for biosecurity and public, public health and food safety. And of course the universities also are, are a significant employer of veterinarians in research and teaching and in the delivery of high-end um, clinical. The One Medicine, One Health concept, I'll just make a, a brief statement about that. This is something that um, the veterinary profession um, kind of take a very active interest in. Um, the, the basic thesis is that um, medicine and health is something that spans all forms of life and it goes between animals and humans and indeed also the environment. So we talk about a healthy, um, a healthy One Health system, it covers animals, the environment and humans. And the veterinary profession has a very important role to play in ensuring that that continuum um, remains healthy and sound. Through wow. ensuring that we have safe food supply, that the food that we eat is safe and wholesome, uh, and that we're protected against bioterrorism that might um, be targeted at disrupting food supplies. Some diseases are zoonotic. Zoonotic means that they will travel from an animal to a human. They can be directly transferred, and there's a number of examples of that kind of disease. Uh, and indeed diseases can go the other way. Humans can be giving their organisms to their animals. So that cross transfer, that zoonotic transfer is a very important thing to consider. And recently, not in this state, but in um, Queensland, there's been, and New South Wales, a lot of concern about Hendra virus transmitted by bats to horses and from horses to humans. So that's an example of a zoonotic disease. And vets clearly have a role in controlling that. Um, Protection of wildlife, companion animal medicine, uh, vets are advocates for animal welfare, and quite often animal models are very useful models to study um, human diseases. So all of that kind of is embodied in this One Health um, concept. <coughs> Careers in um, if you have a degree in just animal science, so this is leaving veterinary science aside, and if you had done the degree in animal science, what we've done is just look at where our graduates, um, the roles that they've taken up, the career paths that they've taken up over the last, say, two to three years, and just make, made a list on this slide and the next slide of the kinds of career pathways that the animal science graduates have moved into. So some of them have become um, animal health officers, biosecurity officer, uh, in, into a animal research, uh, animal technician, gone into specialist, specialised in nutrition, animal reproduction. Uh, one of them has joined a, a dairy company and is playing a role in the management of the, the dairy. Uh, and indeed in other production systems the same thing is happening, it doesn't have to be limited just to dairy. Um, some other examples, graduates have joined, become graduate officers in the Department of Fisheries and Forestry, so that's kind of a government service. Some have become teachers, joined the, become teachers, um, laboratory technicians, research officers, join the National Park as a ranger or become, uh, got a job at a zoo, uh, animal welfare advisor, and one of our female graduates recently created a new job for her, she is now the chief puppy trainer at the Royal Society for the Blind. So that's just a fantastic kind of um, example, I think, of you know, we didn't train someone specifically to do that role, but with the skill set that she had, she saw an opportunity, she applied for a position at the Royal Society for the Blind, and with skills that she had around um, understanding how animals work and particularly how to train them, she is now the chief puppy trainer for the South Australian uh, Royal Society for the Blind, a very gratifying position. Um, some become pharmaceuticals reps and we have one or two that go into journalism. So a very diverse range of careers if you took the degree in animal science. Okay, now I'm going to ask Alicia, the, um, one of our sixth year, final year DVM students, if she can just um, reflect on some of the experiences that she's had as a student 
from a student's perspective, her time um, in the course and particularly at Roseworthy. hear me is that okay yeah. so um, as Wayne said my name is Alicia Triscuit and I'm a final year vet student here at the University and I suppose I was asked to come and talk to you today about my well, the students perspective on what it's like to study at Adelaide Uni and to live out at Roseworthy and if you are interested in studying to be a vet and you've been out to the college and had a look at our facilities then you'll know that they're extensive and they're wonderful but what I'm here to talk to you about is what you perhaps can't see on the tour and that's this incredible sense of community that exists out at Roseworthy. And uh, as corny as it sounds, after six quite long and at times very stressful years of studying, it's the people that you live with and the people that you study with that really do become a part of your family. And so in true student style, um, when I was asked to give this talk, the first thing that I did was to phone a friend. And I phoned a lot of friends, actually. And I asked them what it was that they loved about studying at Adelaide. And I found that... Um, the same things were being repeated again and again, so I'll just share with you a few of those things today. In terms of the VET degree itself, not only do we have some of the best facilities in the world, but we also have some of the best lecturers that work within these facilities. And they care not only about your academic progress, but just as importantly, they genuinely care about our emotional and our mental well-being. And they're also some of the first to let their hair down and hit the dance floor at our annual VET ball which if you've seen some of us looking a little dishevelled, it was last night, which is why also in the early hours of this morning as well. Um, and the course also allows you to get hands-on experience really early on in the first couple of years. And for someone like me, I grew up in the city. And so this was a real attraction to this degree for me because I'd never stepped foot on a dairy or a feedlot uh, before I started. And I had no idea how to tip a sheep or take blood from a cow. Um, the course is also structured so that in your later years, in the DVM years, um, you get to choose where you'd like to do your out-of-university placements. Um, and you're encouraged to go interstate or even overseas, like myself and many of my colleagues have done. And so I have a particular love of wildlife, so I've um, done a lot of placements in zoos and in wildlife facilities and hospitals. Along with the numerous... Oh, sorry. Yeah, we also have a lot of special interest groups at the university and this gives students the opportunities to further pursue the particular areas that interest them. And these student groups are all student run and they give, give, they give us a really good opportunity to take on leadership positions and to experience what it's like to work as part of a big team and to organise events and to network with uh, vets and experts in our particular field of interest. One thing that I really love about the uni, and this was echoed by a number of the people that I asked, is um, that because the vet degree is relatively new, um, the people are really open to new ideas and to change. And so this provides a really useful and great platform for students to have a real impact on college life. So if you want to start your own special interest group or a um, sporting committee that doesn't already exist, or if you want to fundraise and do a bake sale for a charity that you care about, or like my friend and I have done, if you want to create your own veggie patch, then you can. And there are people at the uni that are more than happy to support and encourage you to make these changes. In terms of, <coughs> sorry, in terms of living out at Roseworthy, fortunately, the decision was um, made for me because I live too far from the campus to travel each day. And I say fortunately because I think if the decision was left to second year Alicia, she probably would have just stayed at home because it was easy. But I really believe that by not living out at the college, you miss out on a huge part of the veterinary and the college experience. We have loads of different events. We have bonfire nights and formal dinners and not so formal dinners. And we have a gym and a swimming pool like Wayne discussed. Um, the scenery out there is really beautiful and we're only 15 minutes from the Barossa. Um, every night we line up at six o'clock um, and dinner's cooked for us and the doors of the cafeteria open and it's just so glorious to have dinner cooked for you. Um, and when you're in final year and you're on call, you're within walking distance of the hospitals, and that's just great because when you have to check on a sick horse at 2 o'clock in the morning, you really appreciate not having to get in your car and drive anywhere. 
And there's just this brilliant sense of camaraderie and community that exists at Roseworthy. And if I want to borrow a textbook or ask a question, I can just pop next door and ask my neighbour. But one thing that I really love about the college is that um, no matter the time of day or night, there's always someone within the college vicinity that's selling $1 Cadbury's charity chocolates. Um, because it doesn't matter how pushed for time you are or how close the deadline's approaching, you can always find time to trek across campus to find someone that's selling $1 Cadbury's charity chocolates. And I'm really going to miss that when I leave. But I could go on for a long time and mention all the things that I love about the college, but I'd just say that if you're interested in studying to be a vet or an animal scientist, then um, go out and, and check out the facilities and, and have a tour around. And I just hope that today I've given you a small insight into the things that you might not see on your tour, like the dinners that we share and how supportive our lecturers are, our amazing special interest groups, and the sense of community, because when I have to leave at the end of the year, those are the things that I'm really going to miss. So thank you. So for anybody that would like uh, more information, if anything that we've said here is of interest to you and you'd like to follow up, please go down to the um, school's display on the maths lawn. Um, that's a, a first thing that you could do. Another thing that you could do is register interest in coming out to Roseworthy on the 22nd of September when we have um, some information sessions there. We'll have a morning session and an afternoon session and the uh, website where you can register interest is indicated there. So that would be an opportunity for you with your, perhaps with your parents or with another person to come out and take a look around and get a, uh, a better look at what's involved. Um, as I mentioned, there's the first year of the, both of those programs are spent predominantly here at North Terrace and immediately after this session I believe that there are some um, student outside who are offering to lead tours around this um, campus, the North Terrace campus. If you want to get a closer look at some of the facilities and amenities on North Terrace where you would spend the early parts of your course in animal science, vet science, then you have the opportunity to do that as well. So I guess the final message is the young lady in the middle is another one of our final year vet students and um, she's going to graduate at the end of this. So you're all sitting here, um, potentially six years out of putting yourself in that picture. And if you want to do that, if you're interested in doing that, then please follow up and um, take all of the avenues that I've mentioned. You can walk down to the uh, Mass Lawn, come out and see us at Roseworthy in September uh, and take a, take a closer look and perhaps in uh, a few years time that can be you. Uh, on the photo. To get down to the mass lawn, um, you just leave the Elder Hall and the way you came in and then basically head the arrows a little bit, oh, the arrows you can see, so head down to the uh, lawn area just next to the Braggs building. Basically it's that way, just walk that way through the university and you'll come to the mass lawn and you'll find the sciences tent, faculty of science tent within there, a display for the School of Animal and Veterinary Science and there'll be people there who can provide more information and answer any further questions that you might have. Thank you very much for listening. <laughs>